table chair empty. And I came in, we had some extra tables in, and there was only one place to sit, and that was next to Roy Pierce here at the head table. So I had to come down the aisle, crawl underneath the head table, with my suit on, and he just got the biggest charge out of that. And we started to laugh, and uh, ended up spending one of the most enjoyable evenings I've ever had. It gave me the opportunity to know Roy Pierce, and I've really relished that ever since. My wife, sitting to my right, has had a great influence on me. She always insisted that the more we give, the more we receive. And when I joined Kiwanis, I knew there was giving involved. I didn't really understand what the receiving was. Well, what I came to find out is really somewhat uh, surprising to me. And that is, throughout all the different stages of life, we have people that play a very, very important role in our own development and where we are going. I look around the room and I see Joel Dickerson and <clears throat> Dick, Le Dick Lepo, and especially Bert Stamp over there, Charlie Young, Dick McNeil, people to me who are just outstanding examples of how to live. The guy that's going to speak tonight, I think probably exemplifies that as well, or probably better than anybody in the room. Great pleasure I present to you, Roy Pierce.
Wyoming, Eastern Utah, Northern New Mexico, Nevada, Western Colorado, Eastern California, and the North and West slopes of Arizona. That's a lot of water. It then descends into the Gulf of Lower California at sea level. Now, geologists do not agree as to exactly how the river formed the canyon, but the most accepted account is as follows. At one time, the Colorado was a broad and sluggish stream, much like the, the Missouri and Mississippi River are today, and the land was not much above sea level. But then we had one of those periodical crustal movements, and the whole plateau country began to rise. And when this happened, higher elevations usually mean higher precipitation. It also increases the speed of the current. So this thing had a multiple effect upon the Colorado River and its tributaries. So the river carried along with it sand, silt, pebbles, stones, boulders. And these are great cutting tools. And all the streams of the region began to deepen their gorges. In times of flood, the Colorado has transported as much as 33 million tons of rock <coughs> past the Bright Angel Gauging Station in one day. And before Glen Canyon partially plugged the flow, it used to move 170 million cubic yards per year, or more than enough to take a Panama Canal every three years. Some geologists estimate it's taken from 7 million to 25 million years to do this. So about a dozen Octobers ago, my wife was seal, my son Glenn and I took off, and we went to Flagstaff and picked up our grandson Paul, who many of you have met at that time as a sophomore at USC, and we headed north for the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is approximately 90 miles north of Flagstaff. And on the way north, we stopped to the lookout and we met a most charming couple from Houston. <coughs> and they had just come from the Grand Canyon. Did it meet your expectations, I asked. Oh, yes, the man said. But there's really only one way you can see the canyon, and that's to get down in it. And the best way to do that is to take a mule. Never crack a smile. <laughs> Be sure to take a two-day trip. Well, I said, boy, we're getting somewhere. We've driven 2,000 miles to get here. We're going to do this right. So we arrived at the Bright Angel Lodge on the south rim, <coughs> and I went and applied for three mules. Come back in the morning prepared to go, said the girl. We got two available, and we usually have a cancellation. Now, that should have told me. Something. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't ring a bell. <laughs> At 7.45 a.m. next morning, our names were called, and with big smiles on our faces, we headed for the corral and settled up waiting for our party for nine mules. How many of you ladies know what a mule is? Will you raise your hand? Sure. What's the mule, horse. man? The cross between a donkey and a horse. She's a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> but a mule is a cross between a jackass and a mare horse. And one day, my oldest boy, I was having trouble with him, and I said, Lee, you're acting like a mule. And he said, what's a mule? And I said, a mule has a mare for a ma and a jackass. Why don't you go play? <laughs> I'm the head honcho on this trip. 
If anybody, everybody follows my orders, we won't have any problems. Keep your mule about four feet behind the one ahead of you. Don't let him stop and eat weeds or he could back off the trail. <laughs> now everybody but you, according to me, mount up. <laughs> what method they use to put what tourist on what mule I haven't is yet determined. With everyone mounting up, Bill came back to me and he said, this is Althea. And I took a good look at Althea and there she stood. <laughs> and I said, is she alive? <laughs> Bill hit her with a stick and she opened one eye and he said, of course she's alive. <laughs> Well, to me, I said, she looks like she had an IQ of about 11. And he said, that's about right, <laughs> but that's high for a mule. <laughs> now, he said, Bill, I want to tell you about Althea. She's a little slow. That's why I've got you on Althea in the rear. And he handed me the stick. He said, you got to keep up. If she slows down, Beat her with a stick. Don't hit her. Beat the hell out of her. Come <laughs> on up. Well, along with my, my anxiety about Althea, I began to have some reservations about Bill. <laughs> he looked like he'd been kicked off against State's football team. He found him a little great. <laughs> that would make his IQ lower than Althea. <laughs> I got my foot in a stirrup and I swung myself up and immediately I sensed the saddle and that portion of my anatomy. You know what anatomy is? <laughs> I was over in the hospital a couple weeks ago and this red-haired nurse said, I've got to examine your anatomy. You know what anatomy is? I said, everybody has an anatomy that looks better on a girl. <laughs> designed this thing that I put my anatomy on didn't match the designer of the salad. <laughs> without consultation, they developed both of them. <laughs> they swung open the gate and almost instantly we were on the trail. And almost instantly, I wondered how I got to be as old as I was. <laughs> the trail at this point was pretty wide. It was about four feet. And to my left, there was a thousand feet right straight down. On the mule ahead of me was the top of North Carolina. When we entered the, the trail that morning, I visited with him and he was from North Carolina. He'd been everywhere, he'd seen everything. He'd been in the Himalayas and this was going to be a cakewalk. And when we got on the trail, I saw him look over the edge, shut his eyes, grab a hold of the saddle. I don't think he saw another thing the rest of the trip. <laughs> the, the trail is covered with loose stone. And I soon discovered that if a stone is seven or eight inches in diameter, mule isn't going to step over it. He goes around it, <laughs> and he prefers the outside. <laughs> the mule ahead of me was sometimes six inches from the edge. Well, I thought, heck, I know how to drive a mule. I'm a farm kid. My dad had a team of mule, Jack and Jenny. I remember them well. So every time we came to store, the store, I ran out there to the right. This worked four consecutive times. And the fifth time she stiffened her neck and went to the left. And the rest of the trip, I knew who was boss. <laughs> no Yankee tourist going to tell her how to walk a trail she had been down a hundred times. Well, we've been on a trail about 20 minutes when we lost our first rider. He was a skinny, wild-eyed looking kid. And he hollered at Bill and he said, I forgot to take my medicine this morning. I've got to get off and go back after it. And I wondered why I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty minutes 
sign the trail. The seventh mural in front had to stop and go past. <laughs> the sixth mural reached the identical place and had to go past. <laughs> this happened four more times. And I figured they thought they had squatter's rights. <laughs> Things are bad enough on a 30 degree trail, but with Althea, Althea didn't have to go. <laughs> but with her sliding through running water, it didn't help my peace of mind. <laughs> Cable 
suspension brakes and headed for Fran Phantom Ranch. We were out of the hazardous part of the trip. The other factors were taking over. That part of me that came into contact with the saddle was in terrible shape. <laughs> After the dermis was all gone, and we were now in the dermis. <laughs> That's the part that contains blood vessels. <laughs> Mostly nerves. <laughs> Both legs were paralyzed. The general numbness was spread. <laughs> it was then I came to some definite conclusions. Never again would I get on a mule. <laughs> There's no way I was going to ride Althea back out of there. And someday, I would ask that nice couple from Houston and Bill to come up in our part of the country. I'd show them one of the seven natural wonders of the world. I'd show them Niagara Falls. And then I'd tell them, There's only one way you can see the world. <laughs> Dismounting was a challenge. <laughs> Some of these guys had to help them. Up. I got off of them myself, but it was quite off where I could walk. <laughs> Paul and Glenn had fared no better. The Phantom Ranch is in a uh, is in a uh, canyon beside the sparkling waters of Bright Angel Creek. And uh, at Bright Angel Creek, an excellent trout stream. I saw eight pound rainbows caught there. Phantom Ranch has about 10 buildings with a bunk, a large dining room, every stick of wood, every piece of furniture had been brought in there on the back of a mule. Sheer rock cliffs extend 2,000 feet up on each side. Most beautiful campground I've ever seen. Stationed at the camp were two park rangers, both young fellows, both from the east. And I sought one of them out, and I said, what are the chances of getting a helicopter out of here in the morning? <laughs> he said, helicopters in the canyon are against the park rule. The only time we use them is for medical evacuation. <laughs> are you sick? <laughs> I said, no, but there's a part of me that's in bad shape. <laughs> I said, by the way, you're here. How did you get here? Did you ride a mule in here? He said, you think I'm nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and Brother Vic Grin said, we'll see what we can do about chopping. <laughs> well, the evening meal was served to about 50 hikers, mule riders, and it was hilarious. Unless you could find a worker chair with a cushion <laughs> to sit on, you stood up. <laughs> All the wooden seats were given to the hiker. Then the grapevine had been busy that I had been seeking out someone with a chopper. And that evoked a lot of interest among some of them. And this one lady who I had been eating with, <coughs> Didn't like her very well to begin with. <laughs> said you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I said, what have I done since I got here? <laughs> she said, you're not allowing those boys to ride back out of here on a mule. I said, ma'am, that's an optional thing. <coughs> and I said, they could go with me or they could, uh, they could uh, go out on a mule. But they thought they shouldn't leave me all alone. <laughs> <laughs> she said, isn't it expensive? And I said, yes, it is. I said, how much? And I said, got 195 bucks to get a chopper to fly out of here. She said, that's a lot of money. I said, sure it is. But I said, I got a job back in Ohio, paid me $50 a week. And in a month, I got all my money back, and I'm still alive. And she wouldn't need with me. I said to her, uh, to a lady who was with her, she's a pleasant sort, isn't she? I said, is she married? And she said, yes, she is. She said, 
she didn't get married till way late in life. I said, how did she find her husband? And she said she was in Southern Ohio, and she saw this poster with a man's picture on it that was wanted, and she offered a hundred dollars more than the government. <laughs> Follow the Colorado River is 205 river miles. And that is center is over a mile. You could put four Empire State buildings each atop of the other, and they wouldn't reach the rim. The canyon averages 10 miles across, but some of those bays get back in 20, 30 miles, and all covers more than a thousand square miles. But the vast bulk of the area had never been explored for the white man. No, they say Indians still live in the remote area. There are no adequate words to describe this place. Blossom comes as close as I've got in my vocabulary. It boggles your mind. You can't comprehend what you see. Three days are not enough. Someday I'd like to go back, walk in, <coughs> and fish for rainbow. My old known house toward Althea was if any of us in this room had to put up with three million tourists a year, it might affect us a little strangely. Now, mules are rather recent invention, and I've made this statement before, and unfortunately I ran into a minister in the crowd one time, and he said I was wrong. I made the statement there's no mention of the mule in the Bible, and he came up to me with quotations on where to find the mention in the Bible in about three different places. So I don't use that much when there's a minister in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'd say this, I'll tell you all this. Anyone willing to ride a mule down the Grand Canyon should be prohibited by law from running for public office. <laughs> nowadays to pull uh, barges. One of our presidents drove a mule along the, the canal here in Kent. I heard they got a high specific gravity. I heard one of them that slipped off one day, went in the water, and just his ears sticking two feet up above the surface, and he continued on to his destination breathing through it here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually see this. <laughs> but a very old Kiwanian told me this when I was young. And I never knew an old Kiwanian to tell a lie unless it was convenient. <laughs> Five years after I'd been to Grand Canyon, a neighbor of mine went out there Immediately he went to Corral and he said, I want to see Althea. And they said Althea is no longer with him. They said that five years ago, some old guy from Ohio came out here, <laughs> rode her down, and when he went home, she became listless and passed away. <laughs> <laughs> 